बिजनेस प्रोसेस ऑटोमेशन फिर बिजनेस प्रोसेस ऑटोमेशन सर व्हाट एग्जैक्टली डू बी मीन बाय बिजनेस प्रोसेस क्लियर व्हाट एग्जैक्टली डू बी मीन बाय बिजनेस प्रोसेस बिजनेस प्रोसेस इज नथिंग बट वे ऑफ परफॉर्मिंग द एक्टिविटीज ऑफ अ बिजनेस आई रिपीट स्टेप्स टू परफॉर्म स्टेप्स टू परफॉर्म बिजनेस एक्टिविटीज आई रिपीट स्टेप्स टू परफॉर्म बिजनेस एक्टिविटीज इज कॉल्ड व्हाट इज कॉल्ड एज बिजनेस प्रोसेस let us take an example let us take an example of accounting what is the procedure for doing accounting sir step number 1 is journal entry step number 2 is ledger account then we prepare trial balance then trading and pnl account then balance sheet then cash flow statement this is called what a process of accounting so the steps taken i repeat the steps taken to perform the activity of a business are called what business process here business process example i told you example may we have taken accounting process wherein i told you that accounting process starts from journal entries and it will end where sir it will end in cash flow statement and whenever we talk about business process business process can be divided into three types business process can be divided into three types operational business process then we have supporting business process clear and then finally clear finally we have management business process management business process clear how many business processes are there business process can be divided into how many types three types operational business process supporting business process and management business process operation business process is related to lower level management supporting business process is related to middle level management management business process is related to top level management clear now sir what does operational business uh, process deal with sir it deals with core business core business process or you can say clear or you can say day to day activities of a business it takes care of what sir day to day activities of a business example sir purchase clear purchases sales clear purchases and sales these are the day to day activities of any business who will take care of this day to day activities that is nothing but operational business process and operational business process relates to which level of management lower level of management clear sir purchase process and sales process we have in detail in this chapter that we are going to discuss in some time then we have supporting business process supporting business process is also called as what backup process it is a backup of operational process operational process means so middle level management will help lower level management in performing their duties in the same way in technical terms we can say supporting business pro process provides the support to operational business process i repeat supporting business process provides support to whom sir operational business process example sir for example human resource process human resources or hrms human resource management system this also we are going to discuss in detail in this chapter only clear example like what are the activities which a human resource manager performs example number 1 sir recruitment here they will take care of recruitment they will take care of staffing here they will take care of staff they will take care of here they will take care of training of employees training and development of employees training and development of employees they will take care of compensation and benefits compensation and benefits of employees clear then they will also take care of clear career development of employees clear they will also take care of leadership development of employees
these are some examples of what human resource department will do clear in re with respect to supporting business process then we have what sir management business process it deals with what sir it deals with clear it deals with controlling the business procedures it deals with controlling business procedures it deals with what sir controlling everything so top level management will try to control not only the supporting process they will also try to control what sir operating process example sir sir examples may we can say example uh, they will create a clear they will create vision here they are responsible for creating a vision of a company they are responsible for creating the goal of a company they are responsible for budgets here they are responsible for budgets ka here they are responsible for budgets sir they are responsible for profits clear they are responsible for revenue revenue ka projections who will do top level management budget ka projections who will do uh, top level management profits ka projection who will do top level management vision mission goal objectives who will decide top level management so these all come under which processor management process so whenever we talk about business process the steps in performing any activity is called as business process and business process is divided into how many types three types operational business process which is nothing but lower level management supporting business process which is nothing but middle level management and we have management process which is nothing but top level management sir example of operational process purchase and sales example of supporting process human resources human resources what they will do recruitment staffing compensation benefits training and development career development leadership development all these things relating to employees who will take care middle level management will take care and then we have management business process their management business process is relating to top level management they will take care of vision they will prepare vision mission goals objectives they will prepare budget ka forecast they will prepare profit ka projections revenue ka projections etc etc clear so this is in short nothing but business process but sir today as of today clear as of today are people managing their business using human beings or are they managing their business using machines today business process is managed by human beings or it is managed by machines business process is now being managed by machines sir when a business process is managed by machines then it is called what business process automation <coughs> what is business process automation business process automation means reducing reducing human element reducing human element from business process business process clear reducing human element from business process is called what business process automation means i am reducing the involvement of human beings and increasing the involvement of systems when human beings ka involvement reduces and systems ka involvement increases that is called what business process automation clear now basically whenever we talk about business process automation there are four objectives of bpa confidentiality second one integrity third one availability and fourth one is timeliness clear confidentiality integrity availability timeliness confidentiality integrity availability timeliness i think this concept you have already discussed right in chapter number 3 cat when i was explaining you controls concept i might have already explained you am i correct did we discuss this confidentiality integrity availability timeliness okay let us see how we have discussed tell me unauthorized access to data should not be there unauthorized access to data should not be there what is it is it confidentiality integrity availability or timeliness unauthorized access to data should not be there it is confidentiality correct next sir unauthorized modification should not be there my data should not be modified without my permission 
my data should not be modified without my permission integrity sir whenever i want data is given to me whenever i want data is given to me sir only the latest data is given to me only the latest data is given outdated data is not given that is called what sir that is called as timeliness confidentiality integrity availability timeliness clear now this we have already discussed now let us discuss the advantages advantages of business process automation means if i use systems to manage my business if i am reducing human beings from my business i am increasing the dependence on machines then what are the advantages i will get sir advantage number 1 clear advantage number 1 quality and consistency quality and consistency this is advantage number 1 quality and consistency acha you tell me can a human being can a human being perform the same task in a same way every time is it practically possible that a human being can perform the same task say exactly the same way practically impossible so are human beings consistent or inconsistent inconsistent human beings are inconsistent but can a machine perform the same task in a same way every time i am asked to perform every time i am asking the system can a system perform the same task in a similar way that is called what consistency so who is more consistent machines because of this because of consistency quality quality of a system will increase or decrease increase because of consistency quality will also increase next number 2 advantage number 2 time saving time saving advantage number 2 time saving so tell me time taken to complete a task who takes more time to complete a task human beings or machines who takes more time to complete a task human beings since you now so that is why if i start using machines if i start using machines time taken to complete a transaction will increase or decrease if i start using machines automation time taken to complete a task will increase or decrease decrease since the time taken to complete a task decreases since the time taken to complete a task decreases what is going to happen time i will be able to save time i will be able to save advantage number 3 advantage number 3 improves efficiency improves operational efficiency improves operational efficiency clear yes. now sir when human beings are there when human beings are there ever errors will be more or less when human beings are involved in doing a transaction or performing some activity errors will be more or less more but when system does but when system is performing an activity errors will be more or less errors will be less so since errors will be less when a automation happens since errors will be less when machines are involved since errors will be less when machines are involved can i say when errors reduce efficiency increases next then we have clear then we have governance and reliability governance and reliability clear governance and reliability ach now tell me who is more reliable a human being performing an activity is more reliable or a machine performing an activity is more reliable obviously a machine is more reliable than compared to human beings so can i say a company which is using machines can i say a company which is using machines will have an advantage over companies which are using human beings i repeat a company which is using machines will have an advantage over that company which is using human beings am i correct that is called what reliability means 
a company which is using machines to perform an activity will be considered as more reliable than compared to a company which is using human beings in doing a transaction. Next two. Reduces turnaround time. Turnaround time. So, time taken to complete a transaction is called what? Turnaround time. I repeat, time taken to complete a transaction is called turnaround time. Now tell me who will do unnecessary unnecessary activities will be performed by human being or machines? Unnecessary activities will be performed by human beings or machines? Human beings. Since machine do not perform unnecessary activities. I repeat, since machine does not perform any unnecessary activities, time taken to complete a transaction will be less. Since the time taken to complete a transaction is less, turnaround time is also less. Turnaround time means time taken to reduce or complete a transaction. Advantage number 6, reduce cost, reduces cost. Sir, when human beings are there, errors are more and when machines are there, errors are less. Since errors are less when machines are involved, the cost of completing a transaction reduces. Then we have visibility. Like let us say for example, if I am taking an offline class, if I am taking an offline class, is it easy for a management to keep a track of what topic I am teaching, which subject I am teaching, uh, whether I am teaching properly or not. All these details can they easily maintain or difficult to maintain? Difficult to maintain. But sir, in online class, in online class, in online class, can they log in anytime sitting from anywhere? Can they log in and check whether class is happening or not? Check whether actually I am taking class or not? Check whether I am teaching or not. Is it is it easy? Where it is easy? Where a, where the employee of work will be easily visible when you are doing a work manually and when you are doing a work using systems. Online only, right? That is called what? Visibility. So, how many advantages are there? Seven. Advantage number one, quality and consistency. Advantage number two, time saving. Advantage number three, operational efficiency. Example number four, sorry. Uh, advantage number 4, reliability and governance. Number 5, reduce turnaround time. Number 6, reduce cost. Number 7, visibility. Clear? No. Now let us see. Now let us see examples of. Clear? Now let us see examples of. Clear? Examples of business process. Examples of business process. Business process. Sir, we have different different types of examples of business process. Let us see what we have. Sir, question number one we have discussed here. What is business process? And what are the types of business process we have discussed? Question number two, we have already discussed that is what is BPA and what are the objectives of BPA Fiat. Question number three, advantages of BPA, we have already discussed. Then question number four, five we will see later, six we will see later, seven we will see later, eight also we will see later, nine we will see later, ten later, eleven we will see later, twelve. So twelve we have already done in chapter number five, right? ITGC, Information Technology General Controls. ITGC, we have done in chapter number 5. I told you, right? Same question is exactly copy and paste in chapter 1 also. Same concepts we have seen. All these concepts we have already discussed. So, again, in this, uh, this chapter, we are not going to discuss. Next. Now, from here, we are examples of business process starts. Sir, what is the uh, first one? Procure to pay. Procure to pay means purchase process. Here, procure to pay means which processor? Purchase process. They say what is procure to purchase process and what are the risk and controls involved? What are the risk and controls involved in purchase process? Clear. Risk and control are opposite of each other. If you know the risk, exactly opposite will be controls. If you know the control, exactly opposite will be risk. Now tell me, 
if something is written in negative terms if something is written in negative terms it is a risk or control if something is written in negative terms risk or controls it is risk if something is written if something is written in positive terms then it is controls if something is written in positive things then it is called as controls now let us see risk and controls risk that we have given unauthorized changes to supplier master file what should i write in control only authorized changes to supplier master file all valid changes to supplier master file are not input and process what should be the control all valid changes to supplier master file are input and processed exactly opposite changes to supplier master file are not correct changes to supplier master file are correct or accurate changes to supplier master file are delayed changes to supplier master file are not delayed not processed in a timely manner processed in a timely manner supplier master file is not up to date it is up to date system access to maintain vendor master has not been restricted to authorized users has been restricted to authorized users exactly opposite unauthorized purchase requisitions are ordered purchase requisition clear only authorized purchase requisitions are ordered purchase orders are not entered correctly into the system purchase orders are entered correctly into the system purchase orders issued are not input and processed are input and processed amounts are posted in accounts payable for goods and services not received amounts are posted in accounts payable only when goods and services are received amounts posted to accounts payable are not calculated and recorded properly are calculated and recorded properly amount for goods or services received are not input and processed are input and processed in accounts payable amounts for goods or services received are recorded in the wrong period now you tell what should be the control amount for goods and services are recorded in wrong period need not tell the complete sentence just tell how will you write in the positive one need not type complete sentence just tell the positive one what should i write here in a positive sentence <coughs> risk is clear risk is this one amount for goods and services received are recorded in wrong period clear amount for goods and services received are recorded in wrong period now tell what will you write for this control this one what i have highlighted correct recorded in the correct period accounts payable amounts are adjusted based on unacceptable reasons they should be they should be accept adjusted based on acceptable reasons exactly opposite credit notes and other adjustments are not accurately calculated and recorded are accurately calculated and recorded all valid credit notes and other adjustments are not input and processed are input and processed credit notes and other adjustments are recorded in wrong period are recorded in correct period disbursements are made for goods and services that have not been received disbursements are made only for those goods and services which have been received disbursements are distributed to whom sir unauthorized suppliers should be distributed only to authorized suppliers disbursements are not accurately calculated and recorded they are accurately calculated and recorded all disbursements are not recorded all disbursements are recorded disbursements are recorded for inappropriate period they are recorded for appropriate period adjustments to inventory prices are not recorded promptly are recorded promptly are not done in appropriate period are done in appropriate period exactly opposite system access to process transaction 
has not been restricted to authorized users tell me control for this one okay tell me a control for this one what i have highlighted here you tell me what should be the control restricted has been restricted to authorized users restricted to authorized users <coughs> then they say write a short note on order to cash process order to cash process means sales process order to cash process means sales process clear okay? sales process and what are the risk and uh, control still what means sales process so how does sales process start first customer order is received how will the sales process start sir first customer order is received after receiving the customer order i will try to fulfill the order fulfill the order means i will check whether i have goods to deliver or not i received an order from customer but i don't know whether i can provide goods or not i will check do i have goods or not that checking is called what one sir order fulfillment after order fulfillment what will i do i will deliver the goods to customer after delivery of goods what will happen invoice will be generated and then customer say payment will be received and that payment will be adjusted to customer's account correct order is received order is fulfilled order is delivered invoice is generated payment is received payment is adjusted against customer account this is called which process sales process now let us see what are the risk and controls involved in sales process number 1 customer master file is not maintained properly what should i write is maintained properly customer master file may information is not accurate customer master file may information should be accurate invalid changes are made to customer master file only valid changes should be made to customer master file all valid changes to customer master file are not process input and processed are input and processed changes to customer master file are not accurate they should be accurate changes to customer master file are not processed in timely manner they should be processed in timely manner customer master data is not up to date it is up to date it is not relevant it is relevant system access to maintain customer master has not been restricted to authorized users has been restricted to authorized users orders are processed exceeding the credit limit without approval order exceeding the credit limit should be processed only after approval orders are not approved by management orders are approved by management orders and cancellations are not input correctly they are input correctly order entry data are not transferred to what sir invoice they are transferred to shipping and invoice detail all orders received from customers are not input and processed all orders are input and processed credit notes issued are not recorded in the system they are recorded in the system invoices are recorded in wrong period they are recorded in correct period credit notes are recorded in wrong period they are recorded in correct period credit clear cash receipts are not recorded in the period in which they are received they are recorded in the period in which they have been received cash receipts are not entered in system for processing cash receipts are entered into the system for processing cash receipt data are not valid they are valid cash discounts are not accurately calculated and recorded they are accurately calculated and recorded collection of data clear sorry collection of accounts receivable is delayed and not properly monitored it is not delayed and is properly monitored system access to process transactions has not been restricted to authorized users has been restricted to authorized users understood how risk and controls work i hope you understood now how risk and controls work exactly the opposite of risk is control exactly the opposite of control is risk clear now uh, we will close the class here and balance we will continue in tomorrow's class clear if anyone has any doubts you can clarify else we will close the class no uh, questions uh, don't come on risk questions actually don't come on risk and controls these are only examples clear these are only examples they don't ask an exam 
out of uh, just go through two or three examples right two examples of risk two examples of control more than enough don't remember all these things remember day one only i told you whatever risk and controls ka table i've given in first chapter these are examples of risk and control need not write all risk and controls in exam only two examples of risk two examples of control which is easy for you remember and go and write clear 99.99% sure they won't ask risk and controls in exam these are only examples if they ask risk and controls it will be from chapter number 3 only i think chapter number 3 may we have studied controls right if they ask controls it will be from chapter number 3 only these are only examples of controls which they don't ask in exam clear in case if they ask they ask in mcqs only in mcqs how will they ask they will give you risk they will ask you to find out controls out of four options or they may give you control and give you four options they will ask you to find out which is a related risk in that case will you be able to identify if they give you risk in mcqs and ask you to find out control you should be able to find out how sir examples are given here examples are given here so don't go remember all these examples two examples of risk two examples of control more than enough that much only you write in mcq is if they come in mcq is if they come you obviously know how to identify the risk and control now i hope it is clear like once we are done with eis once we are done with this uh, syllabus in a couple of days we will uh, go through two three question papers that time i will tell you how to write uh, how to present answers in exam what type of questions you can expect in exam what type of questions you can't expect in exam everything we will discuss clear last day like once we are done with eis and sm syllabus we will take the question paper and we will discuss both eis and sm in that way it will be much more uh, better for you to understand so let us close the class and balance we will continue in tomorrow session so yesterday in chapter 1 we completed uh, question number 13 that is procure to pay that is nothing but purchase process then we have seen risk and controls question number 14 we have completed order to cash or sales process along with that we have seen risk and controls now then we have human resource process write a short note on human resource process and also mention it risk and controls sir so human resource process may four steps are there first one is recruitment and onboarding second one is orientation and career planning third one is career development and fourth one is termination or transition clear so how many steps sir total four steps i'll write the notes here human resource process in human resource process first one we have is clear recruitment clear recruitment sir what is recruitment process of hiring the people through interview i repeat it is a process of hiring people through interview so in simple will say right it is a process to hire people through interview through interview so i am conducting the interview to select the right candidate for the right job that process is called what sir that process is called as recruitment after recruitment what is going to happen sir after recruitment onboarding is going to happen clear yes, onboarding now sir what do we mean by onboarding onboarding is nothing but process of getting process of getting <coughs> successful applicant clear process of getting successful applicant as an employee simple sir i have conducted interviews sir clear after conducting interviews i recruited people now out of so many people sir clear out of so many people who have given interviews i have shortlisted and selected five people then i will ask them to join my company the procedure of the procedure of making sure that the people who have cleared the interview join my company is called what is called as onboarding then third one we have is orientation third step we have is orientation sir what is orientation it is nothing but a process by which it's a process by which 
employee becomes employee becomes member of member of organization like let us say for example i will clear i will ask you to come to office you will sign agreements clear i will also sign the agreement then uh, i will uh, start providing you training i will ensure that you meet with the existing pe new people now what happens i will tell you how many people work under you you will also get to know how many people ke under you have to work clear who will, whom you have to report to who will report to you all these things are nothing but what sir all these things are nothing but examples of clear orientation now after orientation what is going to happen career planning after orientation career plan clear after orientation career plan what is career planning career planning is nothing but employee clear employee plus organization ka supervisor or you can say manager clear employee and supervisor both will sit together and plan clear and prepare and prepare long term goals of organization long term <coughs> long term goals of organization simple so employee and supervisor or manager all of them will sit together and prepare the long term goals and objectives of a company that step is called what career planning <coughs> after career planning what is going to happen career development clear after career planning we have career development so what is career development career development is nothing but professional growth <coughs> professional growth professional growth is nothing but career planning <coughs> means i clear organization will scan work history clear will scan employee work history work history why they will scan work history because they want to know whether you are a successful employee or not they whether they want to decide whether you are eligible for promotion or not that is called what career development where your professional growth will happen and last stage we have is termination termination and transition termination and transition means employees leaving the organization right when employees clear normally employees eventually leave the organization clear eventually leave the organization sir no one will be there for lifetime with the company right you will also leave the organization i will also leave the organization some point of time both of us all of us will leave the company and join somewhere else right that is why the hr manager role of hr manager the role of hr manager is to manage is to manage transition process transition process properly process properly clear so how many steps are there sir first one is recruitment i am conducting the interview to hire people that is called what recruitment i am conducting the interview to hire people after hiring the people asking them to join my company on boarding once they join my company i am uh, i am providing some orientation or training to them so that they become a part of my organization and then after orientation employees and the supervisor and managers will sit together and chalk out the plan for uh, future of the company and then after a couple of years uh, organization will check whether i am eligible for promotion or not why what sir by scanning my work history whether i am performing well or not and then employees will at the end of the day employees are employees right clear employees are employees they may leave the organization so whenever they leave the organization which process uh, hr should follow hr should ensure that this termination and transition process is very smooth without impacting any uh, without having any big impact on the company clear so any doubts anyone here anyone having any doubts here in hr process as of now simple concept now let us see what are the risk and controls again i will clear again it is same sir risk is an opposite of control opposite of control will be risk see risk they have mentioned that employees who have left the company continue to have system access clear this is a risk what should be the control employees who have left the company do not continue to have system access exactly opposite control employees have system access in excess of their job requirements employees have system access within their job requirements 
addition to payroll master file do not represent valid employees additions to payroll master file represents valid employees new employees are not added to the payroll master files new employees are added to payroll master files terminated employees are not removed from the payroll master files terminated employees are removed from payroll master files employees are terminated without following statutory requirements employees are terminated by following statutory requirements deletions from payroll master file do not represent valid terminations deletions from payroll master files represent valid terminations control changes to payroll master file are not accurate changes to payroll master file are accurate changes to payroll master files are not processed in a timely manner are processed in a timely manner next payroll is disbursed to inappropriate employees or means salary is disbursed to inappropriate employees what should be the control salary is disbursed to appropriate or authorized employees system access to process employee master has not been restricted to authorized users what should be the control has been restricted to authorized users this is the risk and control clear so exactly opposite of risk will be control exactly opposite of control will be risk then we have question number 16 write a short note on fixed assets process also mention the risk and controls clear now what is a fixed asset what is a fixed asset assets which can be used for one year or beyond one year fixed asset process fixed asset process mein step number 1 procuring an asset procure an asset obviously sir unless and until i buy an asset fixed asset process will not start first i will buy the asset then only fixed asset process will start second step sir after buying the asset register register the asset register the asset how should i register the asset sir A register the asset means add the add the asset into the accounts. Adding the asset in my accounts is called register. What are the details required, sir, to prepare accounts relating to assets? Sir? Like let us say date of acquisition. Clear date of acquisition. It can be clear. Second one can be type of asset. Clear. Then it can uh, we should also know description of the asset. description of asset clear then it will be clear then depreciate clear depreciation depreciation there are many methods of depreciation right so basically these are some examples of what are the things relating to asset what i enter in my accounts after registering the asset what will i do adjustment of assets adjustment of assets clear adjustment of assets adjustment matlab example sir improvements repairs repairs and improvements sir major repairs what should i do should i add it to the cost of asset or should i debit to pnl account major assets what should i do according to you like major repairs what should i do should i add it to the cost of uh, asset or should i transfer to pnl account obviously i should capitalize to the cost of the asset next then then what i can do transfer of assets transfer of assets this is also an example of what sir this is also an example of fixed asset process sir what do we mean by transfer of asset transfer of asset means sale or disposing of here it can be sale sales of asset or disposal of asset disposal of asset clear sale of asset disposable of asset and then we have depreciation then we have depreciation depreciation of the asset these are the examples of what sir items or uh, things what i include in fixed asset process now let us just go through just go through once relating to fixed asset ka 
risk and controls they say invalid changes are made to fixed asset register only valid changes should be made to fixed asset register valid changes to fixed asset register are not input and processed are input and processed changes to fixed asset register is not accurate changes to fixed asset register are accurate changes to fixed asset register are not promptly processed now are promptly processed fixed asset register or master file are not kept up to date they are kept up to date system access to fixed asset master is not restricted to authorized users is restricted to authorized users system configuration pertaining to definition of depreciation base depreciation rate life of asset etc etc has not been correctly defined has been correctly defined fixed asset acquisitions are not accurately recorded are accurately recorded fixed asset acquisitions are not recorded in appropriate period are recorded in appropriate period fixed asset acquisitions are not recorded are recorded depreciation charges are not accurately calculated and are accurately calculated and recorded depreciation charges are not recorded in appropriate period exactly opposite depreciation charges are recorded in appropriate period fixed asset disposal or transfer are not recorded are recorded fixed asset transfers are not accurately calculated and recorded are accurately calculated and recorded so do you want me to discuss all the risk and controls like you want me to go through or you can go through at home you let me know because i think uh, now at least you have an idea how risk and control works you want me to read out read out all the risk and controls can you revise at home okay so you revise same i hope you now you understood right clear i hope now you understood what is risk and control clear just a minute <coughs> Uh, am i audible guys now okay so next process what we have is general ledger process clear general ledger process so general ledger process mein five things auditor has to verify number one auditor has to verify financial transactions like who is entering the financial transactions clear who is entering the financial transactions how are they entering the financial transactions clear financial transactions means day to day transactions of a business then auditor has to also verify who is reviewing the transactions auditor should verify who is approving the transactions who is verifying the cost of transactions means whatever amount is mentioned on the bill is the same amount being entered or not who will has to verify auditor and who is generating financial reports how many things auditor has to verify auditor has to verify five things just give me a minute guys again power has come i will connect it to main power sorry for the disturbance clear so what are the things auditor has to verify <coughs> so what are the things auditor has to verify remember this very important for mcqs number 1 uh, financial transactions being entered into the system who is entering the financial transactions how are they entering the financial transactions what financial transactions are being entered and who is reviewing the transactions being entered who is approving the transactions and who is verifying whether the amount mentioned clear costing of transaction is correctly recorded or not plus who is generating financial reports this is called which process general ledger process which auditor has to verify so coming back from your question number 12 we have completed clear chapter number 5 mein then question number 13 we have completed yesterday then question number 14 we have completed then question number 15 we have completed question number 16 we have completed that is fixed asset process question number 17 we have completed that just now general ledger process now we have question number 18 clear question number 18 question number 18 is nothing but inventory cycle and again inventory cycle may order uh, auditor has to verify three things ordering phase production phase and finished goods phase clear in simple words you can say raw material clear conversion of raw material conversion of raw material to work in progress and conversion of work in progress into finished goods this is called which processor this is called as 
inventory cycle. First, I will order the raw materials, then I will produce the goods and then finished goods, whatever I produce, I will start delivering it to customers. This is important only for uh, MCQs. I think cyber law we have already completed, right? Cyber law, then uh, examples of computer related offenses, then uh, sensitive personal data information. I think these concepts have, uh, I have already explained you uh, when we were in chapter 5, right? Core banking. I have also given notes also, right? Just please confirm once. Cyber crime, I, I think this concept we have completed in chapter number 5 only. I hope you remember, notes also I have already given. Okay. So, after this we have some more concepts pending in this chapter. Initially, we started how many concepts? Uh, three. First three questions we have completed. Now, some miscellaneous concepts are there. Let us finish them. And if we have time, we will start with SF today. If we don't have time, tomorrow we will start. No. Question number four. Steps in clear steps required to implement BPA. Important question. Steps required to implement BPA. Steps to implement business process automation. Clear steps to implement business process automation. Like if today I am clear as of today I am have managed my as of today I am managing my business manually. Now, I decided to convert my manual business into automation. Clear? As of today, I am managing my business manually. Now, I decided that I want to convert my manual business into automated business. Then, you think directly I will just buy the software and start using the software? No. Some steps are required. They are called what? Steps to implement business process implementation. Step number one. Decide. Clear? Step number one. Decide why we plan to implement BPA. Like first you decide are, why you want to go for business process automation, why you want to waste your money, why you want to waste your time, like why you want to go for business process automation. There are many reasons sir. Some reasons we will discuss. There are many reasons that people want to go for business process automation. Businesses want to go for business process automation. Reason number one, sir, errors in manual process, errors in Errors in manual process. Here, errors in manual process. Sir, when human beings are involved, lots of errors are happening. That is why in order to reduce the errors, I want automation to happen in my business. That is one reason. Reason number two, poor data management. Poor data management. Here, sir, my data management is very poor. I don't know how much money I have to receive from whom. When should I receive money? When should I pay money? I am able to manage my data and creditors. Then I will go for automation. Yet another uh, reason, sir. Payment process. Payment process is not streamlined. Like, sir, I am having multiple payment options for customers. Sir, cash on delivery is available. Uh, NEFT is available, RTGS is available, INPS is available, UPI is available, BEAM is available, uh, then uh, wallet payments are available. So many options I am giving to my customers and I am receiving money from different different sources. You think managing, uh, clear, you think managing money from so many sources for a big business is easy or difficult? Difficult. That is why that might be the one more reason that I want to go for BPA. Clear. Next, uh, poor customer service. Here, poor customer service. Sir, what do we mean by poor customer service? Like let us say customers are not happy with the services what I am providing to them. Customer has to wait for 2 or 3 hours. Let us say bank. Customer has to wait for 2 or 3 hours to get the passbook updated. Obviously, customer will not be happy. I want to go for automation, sir. Here. Next, not able to find. Another reason, not able to find documents quickly since everything is physical clear since everything is manual so there are so many registers in my warehouse that it is difficult to find the important papers when i need them i am unable to find my documents whenever i want 
so these are some reasons why business may want to go for what sir automation not all some reasons now step number 2 step number 2 may understand understand the rules and regulations rules and regulations step number 2 may a business should understand rules and reg rules and regulations which business has to comply with business has to comply with business has to comply with so there are lots of rules and regulations right here there are lots of rules and regulations what the business has to perform here uh, example sir example of one rules and regulation document retention requirements documentation retention requirements example sir uh, gst law clear gst law clear according to gst act you have to maintain gst related documents for some number of years and according to income tax act you have to maintain the records for some number of years according to company law you have to maintain the company accounts for some number of years they are called what sir document retention requirements clear one example is documentation retention requirements next to format clear specific format specific format of documents clear specific format of documents like let us say invoices clear for a company or a business for which gst is applicable format of uh, invoice is different and for those gst law is not applicable format of uh, invoices are different clear so these are the some examples of what these are two examples of uh, laws which a business has to follow when it goes for automation step number 3 step number 3 document the process document the process we wish to we wish to automate document clear document the process we wish to automate means sir in a business what i want to automate keep a document on that okay if i want to automate accounting how should i automate accounting maintain some documentation i want to automate billing procedure maintain some documentation if i don't maintain a document it becomes difficult to understand the automation in future example sir like let us say some examples let us say point number 1 clear what format what format of documents should be maintained should be maintained like should i maintain the documents in pdf format should i maintain the documents in word format should i maintain the documents in excel format what format may should i maintain the documents during automation example number 2 what documents have to be automated what documents have to be automated means should i automate sales should i automate purchases should i automate accounting should i automate finance what should i automate everything it is see for a small business automation of all the activities is practically not possible but a big business can automate everything depending upon the size of business you have to decide next to then one more example who is involved clear who is involved in processing documents who is involved in processing documents this also i need to decide which employee is involved in processing of documents which employee should be involved which employee should not be involved that also i need to decide step number 4 may clear step number 4 may i will define objectives of bpa clear i will define the objectives of bpa remember one thing objective of bpa should be smart clear object of a bpa should be smart s means specific m means measurable clear a means clear a means attainable r means relevant and t means timely clear so this is very important for uh, mcqs clear define the objectives of bpa how many objectives of bpa are there sir bpa objective should be smart where a smart may s stands for specific 
M stands for measurable, A stands for attainable, R stands for relevant, and T stands for timely. Next, step number five me, I should hire, here hire business process consultant. I should hire what sir, a business process consultant who will help me in implementing the BPA. Clear? But before, but before uh, hiring the business process consultant, before hiring the business process consultant, ensure, ensure that, ensure that consultant, consultant should have, should have experience. Clear? Consultant should have what sir, experience. Next to consultant should be objective. Objective means this fellow should be able to understand the problem and give a solution to the management. Clear? Next to consultant should be capable, capable of providing recommendations. Clear? So you should not only you should not only identify a problem as a consultant. You should also try to solve the problem plus you should also try to give recommendations to management so that the same problem does not appear again. Clear? So, number one, consultant should be having an experience plus consultant should be objective plus consultant should have the capability to provide the recommendations to management. Then, step number six may, I will calculate, clear step number six may, I will calculate return on investment of the project here i will calculate what sir return on investment of the project means if i like if i invest in bpa technology what is the benefit i'm going to get here what is the benefit i'm going to get example sir some examples of benefit can be saving in employee cost employee cost sir earlier earlier 10 employees used to do one work now one employee is only able to complete all the work using a computer system. Then I will be able to save some cost, right? Next to delays can be avoided. Delays can be avoided. If systems are there, delays in replying to customer can be avoided. Clear? Next to what else I can do? Superior, I can provide superior level of customer service. Means if systems are there, I can provide much more better services to customers than compared to earlier here. And I will be able to collect, I will be able to collect data payments faster. Data payments on time. There are many advantages, right? Here. And after calculating the return on investment, what will I do? I will develop, I will develop business process automation clear i will develop what sir business process automation and after developing the business process automation what will i do i will test bpa testing bpa i will do testing of bpa clear so how many steps are there sir in total eight steps step number one deciding why i want to go for automation step number two okay if i go for automation Understand the rules and regulations relating to automation. Then document which process I want to automate. Do I want to automate only one or two things in the company or do I want to automate everything in my business? Then define the objectives of BPA. Then hire a business process consultant who will help you in implementing BPA. Then calculate the return on investment of the project. Then develop and test a BPA and finally start using business process automation in your business. Any doubts here? Anyone? No doubts? I'll write the heading here, risk. Acha, tell me, risk will have a positive impact on business or negative impact on business? Here, risk will have a positive impact on business or negative impact on business? So risk will have a negative impact on business. Clear? Risk will have a negative impact on business. 
whenever risk is there whenever risk is there organization should manage the risk manage risk whenever risk is there organization should what it should do sir it should manage the risk and managing the risk is called what risk management what is it called sir it is called as risk management here it is called as risk management but before understanding the risk management we need to understand sources of risk sources of risk like from what are the examples of different different sources from where risk can come into a business example number 1 sir commercial and legal relationship commercial and legal relationship clear sir if i clear if you are having a commercial and legal relationship and if i don't follow the rules and regulations of our relationship like agreement then risk will come to a business clear risk will impact the business then we have economic circumstances like inflation and deflation will have a risk on business next to political circumstances it will result into risk for a business then technology technology can result clear technology can sir technology can be an advantage also technology can be a disadvantage also if i am using a latest technology in my business advantage if i am using an outdated technology in my business it is a risk then technical issues technical issues in products or services this again can create a risk for a business <coughs> yes then human behavior sorry sir human behavior can create a risk clear like let us say for example my employee my employee is copying my data and giving it to my competitor it may create a risk to my business right then it can also be because of clear it can also be because of uh, natural events clear it can be because of natural events example of natural events sir Uh, earthquake floods tsunami tornado etc etc these are all examples of what sir different different sources of risk here different different sources of risk now whenever we talk about risk here uh, these are the sources of risk now let us talk about types of risk sir sources of risk are mentioned under question number here question number 5 question number 5 now let us understand clear now let us understand types of risk types of risk so types of risk are mentioned in question number 6 so there are different different types of risk now let us see one by one so risk number 1 operational risk risk number 1 operational risk so operational risk means uh, risk that i am unable to perform my day to day activities properly operational risk means business when will operational risk happen when business is unable to perform unable to perform its daily activities daily activities which is there in efficient manner efficient manner sir i am unable to perform my day to day activities in an efficient and effective manner then what type of risk will come operational risk operational risk means a business is unable to perform its day to day activities properly now since i am unable to since i am unable to perform my day to day activities properly will i be able to achieve my goals and objectives simple question if i am unable to perform my day to day activities properly will i be able to achieve my goal or objective no since i am unable to achieve my goals or objectives it will create what strategic risk strategic risk it will create which risk sir strategic risk what is a strategic risk risk which prevents business which prevents business from achieving its goals simple since i am unable to clear if i am unable to perform my day to day activities properly operational risk and since i am unable to perform my day to day activities properly it is becoming very difficult for me to achieve my goals and objectives it is resulting into which risk strategic risk clear next 
Now, since I am unable to clear, since I am unable to achieve my goals and objectives, I am. It is result. It is uh, making what it is resulting into financial risk. Financial risk. Financial risk. What do we mean by financial risk? Financial risk means negative financial impact. Negative financial impact. Negative financial impact means, sir, since I am unable to achieve my objectives and goals, I am running into losses. That risk of losses is called what? Financial risk. Because of this, my reputation is going. Because of this, my reputation is going. Reputational risk. Reputational risk. Risk of what, sir? Risk of negative publicity. Negative publicity. Clear? Risk of negative publicity is called what? Reputational risk. I am unable to perform my day-to-day -day activities. Operational risk. Since I am unable to perform my day-to-day -day activities, it is clear I am unable to achieve my goals and objectives. Strategic risk. Since I am unable to achieve my objectives and goals, it is having a negative impact on my business. Financial risk. Since because of all these things, my goodwill is getting impacted. Negative publicity is happening in the market for my business. Reputational risk. Because of all these headaches, because of all these headaches, I am unable to, I am unable to comply with laws and regulations. Regulatory risk. Regulatory risk. Regulatory risk. When it will happen, sir? When business is unable to comply, is unable to comply laws and regulations. Laws and regulations. Since I am unable to follow the law, rules and regulations of law, I have clear it is resulting into what? Fines and penalties. Clear? Because of this, what I have today? I have to pay fines and penalties. Which is resulting into which risk, sir? Regulatory risk. Clear? Then we have two more risks. One is hazard risk. And second one we have is clear? residual risk. Residual risk, clear? Hazard risk and residual risk. So, risk which can be insurable, insurable risk. Insurable risk is called what? Hazard risk. A risk for which I can take an insurance. I repeat, a risk for which I can take an insurance is called what? Hazard risk. Example, sir, I can take a, clear, I can take an insurance, I can take an insurance for terrorism activities. I can take an insurance against earthquakes. I can take an insurance against tsunami. So, anything here, any risk which I can avoid or share by insuring it, then it is called what? Hazard risk. Then we have what? Residual risk. So, risk which is remaining, risk which remains even after, even after countermeasures are implemented. Countermeasures are implemented. Means even after implementing all the controls, some risk will always be there. A risk, remember one thing, a risk can never be eliminated. Risk can only be reduced to acceptable level. Clear? So, if I am unable to follow, clear? If I am unable to perform my day-to-day -day activities, operational risk. Since I am unable to perform my day-to-day -day activities, I am unable to achieve my goals and objectives, strategic risk. Because of this, I am running into losses, financial risk. Because of this, my reputation or goodwill is having a negative impact, reputational risk. In all these headaches, I am unable to comply rules and regulations of law. I am continuously paying fines and penalties to government. Reputational risk, sorry, no, regulatory risk. A risk for which I can take an insurance is called what, sir? Hazard risk. And then, even after doing everything possible in my company, I have implemented almost every possible control in my business, but still some risk is always there. That risk which is always there even after implementing the controls is called what? Is called as residual risk. I hope you understood the concept. Any doubts anyone? Types of risk may? Okay. There are some new definitions which have been added to our syllabus. Let us discuss them. Here. Risk management means some definitions they have added. Risk management means some definitions they have added.
let us discuss some definitions <coughs> definition number 1 clear first definition we have is asset first definition we have is asset what is asset asset is something something which provides value to the organization which provides value to the organization clear something which provides value to the organization is called what asset clear i repeat something which provides value to the organization is called asset asset has different features sir there are many features of asset some features let us discuss example number 1 sir clear feature number 1 provides value to organization this we have already discussed feature number 2 can be can be physical or clear can be physical or intangible clear it can be tangible or intangible next to it is a part of it is a part of organization's identity clear it is a part of organization's identity how do i know clear how do i know how do i recognize an organization with the help of a asset only clear next it is not easily replaceable not easily replaceable i cannot easily replace it why it requires lot of cost involved in replacing the asset plus it can be clear classified it can be classified into three parts clear asset can be classified into how many ways three ways number one is proprietary second one can be clear second one can be highly confidential and third one can be top secret important for mcq is clear classified as proprietary little bit more uh, confidential is highly confidential which is more confidential than highly confidential we will write it as what sir top secret proprietary highly confidential top secret this is asset sir second definition we have is vulnerability vulnerability means a weakness in a device or a network which can be exploited clear vulnerability means what it is nothing but a weakness in a system weakness in a system weakness in system clear weakness in a system that exposes it to threats that exposes it to threats clear so my device clear a device which is weak or a network which is weak is called what an example of vulnerability and when vulnerability is there there can be threat also clear no examples of vulnerability sir examples of vulnerability leaving clear leaving house door unlocked clear this is an example of what sir vulnerability why any any thief can enter into your house steal something from your house another examples short passwords clear short passwords or very easy to crack passwords you can say short passwords or easy to crack passwords are examples of what are examples of vulnerability clear next then third definition what we have here is threat clear third definition what we have here is threat sir what is a threat to threat is nothing but clear threat is a event threat is a event with a potential this is very important with a potential to harm to harm system threat is a potential to harm a system threat doesn't harm a system threat is a event which has a potential to harm a system in case if i am exploiting a weakness like let us say you are having a very short password which is easy to crack i am cracking the password and logging into your facebook account in your name without your permission that is called what threat so threat is an event which creates what sir a potential to harm a system i can also call i can also write this definition like this clear threat has threat has capability threat has capability sir it has a capability to attack a system attack system why sir to cause harm 
बिकॉज हम माई इंटेंशन इन इज माई इंटेंशन इज टू कॉज हार्म टू योर डिवाइस दैट इज वाई आई एम डिवाइस राइट दैट इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ वर्ट थ्रेट देन वन मोर डेफिनेशन दे एक्सपोजर मीन्स एक्सपोजर इज नथिंग बट लॉस लॉस टू एंटरप्राइज क्लियर लॉस टू एंटरप्राइज इफ रिस्क मेटीरियलाइज clear when a risk materializes or you can say when someone when someone exploits my weakness when a threat exploits a weakness it results into what risk risk will result into what a negative impact that negative impact is what sir loss it can be financial loss also it can be non financial loss also loss of uh, finance loss of money is an example of financial loss loss of reputation is an example of non financial loss then we have clear then we have likelihood clear likelihood sir what is likelihood likelihood is nothing but probability that probability that threat will exploit a vulnerability probability that threat will exploit vulnerability clear probability that threat will exploit a vulnerability is called what is called as likelihood the percentage chances that threat is going to exploit vulnerability is again an example of what likelihood clear next then we have attack attack means attempt to gain attempt to gain unauthorized access unauthorized access simple sir i am i am trying to i am trying to access your device without your permission that is an example of what attack i am trying to access your wifi network without your permission that is again an example of attack clear so point number 1 what is an asset sir something which provides value to the organization is called what asset something which provides value to the organization is called asset clear next what is a vulnerability weakness in a device or a network is called vulnerability and the clear and the potential and a potential to clear a potential to harm a system by exploiting the weakness is called what threat clear loss which a business faces when a threat exploits a vulnerability when a threat exploits a vulnerability business faces loss this loss is called what exposure next what is likelihood probability that threat will exploit a vulnerability what is the percentage chances what is the chance that clear what is the chance that my Uh, threat may exploit a vulnerability then we have attack attack means i am trying to gain unauthorized access to your device i am trying to gain unauthorized access to your network that is called what attack and last one we have is countermeasure here last one we have is countermeasure so what is a countermeasure it is nothing but here it is a action taken by management action taken by management Clear action taken by management to reduce risk. Reduce risk. Sir, whenever there is a risk, what will management do? Some action it will take. The action which a management takes if a risk is found is called what? Is called as counter measure. Clear? Now, anyone has any doubts in these seven definitions? anyone has any doubts in these definitions these are the new definitions which have been added to our syllabus for november 21 exam see these definitions are there in our syllabus no okay now whenever risk is there whenever risk is there what will management do management will try to manage the risk that is called what enterprise risk management enterprise risk management sir what is enterprise risk management it's a technique clear it's a technique to analyze it's a technique to analyze clear it's a technique to analyze potential events potential events clear potential events manage the risk and provide 
secure and provide reasonable assurance and provide reasonable assurance secure and provide reasonable assurance regarding regarding achievement achievement of business objectives business objectives clear what is erm sir it is a technique which helps the management to identify the potential events potential matlab future events plus manage the risk manage the risk means reducing the risk to acceptable level and also provides a reasonable assurance that business will be able to achieve the objectives ach now you tell me reasonable assurance means what 100% guarantee or less than 100% guarantee it means what 100% guarantee or less than 100% guarantee it is less than 100% guarantee clear less than 100% guarantee now now whenever erm technique is used what in simple words what will erm do help a business helps business in simple words to reduce risk to reduce risk clear to reduce risk it helps a management to reduce risk now let us see what are the advantages here let us take let us now discuss about advantages of what advantages of erm advantage number 1 clear advantage number 1 aligns risk appetite and strategy clear aligns risk appetite and strategy sir what do we mean by risk appetite risk appetite means maximum risk maximum risk what a business is ready to bear what a business is ready to accept clear i repeat the maximum risk what i am ready to accept is called what risk appetite now tell me my strategy should be based on what risk appetite i repeat my strategy should be based on risk appetite depending upon the percentage of risk i am what i am ready to take i should plan my strategy if i am ready to take a very high risk strategy will be different if i am ready to take very less risk business strategy will be different next then advantage number 2 sir it will help me to link clear it will help me to link risk and return risk and return acha tell me risk and return are directly related to each other or inversely related to each other risk and return are directly related or inversely related they are directly related to each other higher the risk higher the return lesser the risk lesser will be the return clear next number 3 enhances enhances risk response response decisions clear enhances risk response decisions there are four types of risk response decisions sir one is avoid one is risk avoidance risk reduction reduce the risk avoid the risk share the risk and accept the risk clear accept the risk i avoid the risk i can either avoid the risk i can either share the risk or i can either reduce the risk or accept risk now avoiding means do not involve do not involve in any activity in any activity which creates risk means do not do any activity which creates risk let us say for example bank let us say for example bank tell me what is the minimum civil score required to apply for a loan to be eligible for a loan seven fifty now if my civil score is five hundred rupees if my civil score sorry if my civil score is five hundred now tell is it risky to give a loan or not risky to give a loan if my civil score is five hundred out of nine hundred points is it highly risky to give a loan or not risky to give a loan so it is very risky to give a loan so in this cases should bank take a risk by giving a loan to me or should bank avoid the risk bank should avoid the risk by not giving a loan to me bank should avoid the risk by not giving a loan to me this is called what risk avoidance means do not involve in any activity which is creating the risk for you 
how to reduce risk implement controls clear how to reduce the risk sir implement controls how to share the risk sir take insurance take insurance sir it will help you to share the risk with insurance partners and then accept clear and then accept accept i will accept risk relating to what small risk small risk which have very little or no impact on business or no impact on business sir is there is a risk but risk is so small that it is irrelevant for me it has zero impact or any imp minimum impact on my business then what will i do accept clear so i will not do any activity i will not do any activity which involves risk risk avoidance i will implement control sir why sir to reduce the risk i will take insurance sir why to share the risk and in case if risk is very small and if i feel that it is irrelevant for my business then what do i do i will enhance clear i will try to accept the risk and move on next number 4 helps to minimize clear helps to minimize helps to minimize operational surprises operational surprises and losses and losses clear helps to minimize operational surprises and losses means it will help me to it will help me to ensure that future may same losses will not occur today i am facing a loss due to some xyz reason erm will help me to ensure that the same reason ke wajah se in future may i will not face any loss so whatever losses i am facing today erm will help me to uh, help me to ensure that future may same losses does not happen to a business that is called what helps to minimize operational surprises and losses next helps to helps to manage cross enterprise risk cross enterprise enterprise risk sir one risk resulting into another risk i repeat one risk resulting into another risk is called what cross enterprise risk fear due to operational risk strategic risk <coughs> due to operational risk business also had strategic risk because of strategic risk it also resulted into financial risk it also resulted into reputational risk also resulted into regulatory risk <coughs> one risk resulting into when one risk is resulting into multiple risk that is called what cross enterprise risk so who will help me in eliminating these type of risk also erm clear yeah, that is why it is also called as what it is also called as integrated integrated response to multiple risk multiple risk means it will help me to it will help me to ensure that if one it will help me to manage multiple risk at the same time let us say for example uh, it will help me to manage my day to day operations properly clear yeah? because of erm i will be able to manage my day to day operations properly since i am able to manage my day to day operations properly operations risk will not come financial risk will not come reputational risk will not come financial risk will not come risk will not come only right so it will help me to manage one risk or multiple risk multiple risk that to at the same time and then it will help me to seize opportunities means it will help me to convert my threat into opportunities plus rationalize capital rationalize capital rationalize capital means what proper utilization of capital here proper utilization of capital why improper utilization of money will again result into losses that is why it will help me to not only convert my threats into opportunities plus it will also help me towards a rationalize capital means proper utilization of capital so that losses will reduce or loss losses will get eliminated clear so take a break of 5 minutes clear take a break of 5 minutes and then we will continue in the meantime what you do is clear in the meantime just go through chapter number 2 to chapter number 5 clear just go through chapter number 2 to chapter number 5 and see if any concept we have not discussed let me know so that we can discuss it clear 
chapter 2 to chapter 5 let me know if any concept you have discussed or not after the break once we complete this chapter we will discuss if not we will see sm yes yeah? so take a break of 5 minutes now let us discuss clear now let us discuss components of clear now let us discuss components of erm components of enterprise risk management erm clear components of enterprise risk management sir component number 1 internal environment internal environment Clear? Internal environment, sir. Internal environment means something which I can control or something which I cannot control. Something which I can control or something which I cannot control. What is internal environment? In BCK, you might have studied it, foundation level. Mm -hmm. Something which is within my control is called internal environment. Example, sir. Example number one, risk appetite. Sir, can I control my risk appetite? Can I control my risk appetite? Means, can I increase the risk what I can take? can i decrease the percentage of risk what i can take yes sir. that is one example of internal environment then clear integrity my integrity i can only control next to people employees they are all examples of what internal environment that is component number 1 then component number 2 we have objective setting component number 2 we have objective setting clear no sir my objective should be as per what my objectives of a business should be as per risk appetite this we have already discussed clear so i repeat business ka objective should be based on what risk appetite and what is risk appetite the maximum risk what i am ready to take is called what risk appetite then third one event identification event identification sir events are of how many types two types clear events are of two types that is internal events and external events events are of two types internal and external clear something which is within my control internal event something which is beyond my control external event next point number 4 clear risk assessment risk assessment now so risk assessment mein there are two types of risk one is inherent risk and second one is residual risk so risk which can be reduced risk which can be reduced this which can be eliminated is called what inherent risk clear a risk which i can eliminate or risk which i can reduce is called what inherent sir even after implementing all the counter measures even after implementing all the counter measures some risk will always be there in my business that risk is called what residual risk this we have discussed right here i think we have discussed somewhere next then number component number 5 clear component number 5 that is risk response risk response now risk response is of how many types this concept also we have already discussed i can avoid risk i can share risk i can reduce risk i can accept risk clear i will not involve in any activity which creates a risk avoiding it i am taking an insurance sharing the risk i am implementing the controls reducing the risk sir risk is there but it will have a very minimum or no impact on my business then i will accept that risk is there and move on then we have control activities clear control activities sir control activities means for uh, implementing the controls why sir in order for what purpose risk management i will implement control activities in order to manage the risk managing the risk means reducing the risk to acceptable level then information and communication information 
and communication clear information and communication so all information in a business every information of a business should be documented clear so that it can be used for future purpose plus it should be communicated by to ensure all the information whatever is whatever i'm documenting or to clear whatever type of information i'm documenting i should also communicate it to my employees by sir to ensure that clear employees to ensure that employees clear carry out carry out their responsibilities carry out their responsibilities properly clear and then last one that is monitor monitoring means checking whether erm is helping me to reduce the errors or not clear what should i monitor sir ongoing management activities i should monitor ongoing management activities management activities clear to ensure that my risk reduces these are the components component number 1 internal environment component number 2 objective setting component number 3 event identification component number 4 risk assessment component number 5 risk response component number 6 control activities component number 7 information and communication component number 8 monitoring clear so these are the components of what these are the components of ERM clear okay? now we have one more concept pending that is internal controls internal controls internal controls may we have two concepts one is components components of internal control clear okay? one is components of internal control and second one we have is limitations of internal control limitations of internal control clear okay. first one we have is components of internal control second one we have is limitations of internal control sir components of internal control and uh, component clear components of internal control and components of uh, erm are almost same clear they are almost same let's see here this is done then question number 5 we have done that is a risk introduction then question number 6 we have done types of risk uh, these definitions we have done then uh, erm and benefits of erm we have done components of erm we have done and then clear internal control what are the components of internal control control environment risk assessment control activities information and communication monitoring same five points we have already discussed under clear same five points we have already discussed under components of uh, erm clear so separately we need not learn again the same points same points are there so you can just uh, read the whatever answer i have given for erm components same answer you can write for internal control components also now so next <coughs> next concept what we have is question number 10 that is limitations of internal control important concept limitations of internal control <coughs> sorry limitations of internal control system internal control system clear limitations of internal control system problem number 1 limitation number 1 clear management's management's assumption clear management's assumption that clear management's assumption that cost of controls cost of controls will never exceed never exceed benefit of controls benefit of controls management is saying that benefit of controls 
benefit will always be more than cost i repeat management is telling that benefit of controls will always be more than cost of controls now tell is it practically possible that benefit is always more than cost is it practically possible that benefit is always more than cost no sometimes benefit will be more than cost sometimes cost will be more than benefit sometimes cost will be equal to benefit but what is management assuming management is assuming that the cost of control will never exceed benefit of control it means they always think management is always thinking that benefit is always more than cost which is practically not possible always number 2 controls are clear controls are not directed not directed towards your unusual transactions unusual transactions clear controls are not directed towards unusual transactions like many people install antivirus many people install antivirus because they feel that virus may come into their device but sir in addition to that we have christmas tree clear we have a bomb we have data trickling we have asynchronous attack clear these are all examples of what sir unusual transactions so many companies many companies do not implement the control towards this unusual transactions they will always implement controls towards what usual transactions that is one more problem in internal controls problem number 3 clear problem number 3 potential potential for human error potential for human error sir what do we mean by potential for human error whenever human beings are involved some errors are bound to happen clear errors are bound to happen that is one more problem next to possibility of possibility of circumvention of controls circumvention of controls through clear possibility of circumvention of controls through collusion clear possibility of circumvention of controls through collusion circumvention means bypassing the controls sir many people are coming together that is called collusion many people are involved in creating a fraud in a business because of which it is becoming very difficult to identify the fraud see if one or two people are involved in fraud easy to detect some person will tell me but sir if 20 30 40 people in my company are involved in doing a fraud then what is going to happen then it is very difficult to identify the fraud next then person responsible for control person responsible for controls may override controls may override controls means a person who is responsible for maintaining the controls is on loan not following the controls a person who is responsible for maintaining the controls is only not following controls that is one more problem clear and then manipulation clear manipulations by management manipulations by management clear manipulations by management in what sir in preparing in preparing financial statements example sir window dressing window dressing is an example of what manipulations by management these are the problems where sir these are the problems of limitations of internal controls next sir question number 11 we have already discussed just now in uh, clear eliminating the risk transfer of risk accepting the risk mitigating the risk this concept we have already studied now question number 12 we have already covered question number 13 we have covered question number 14 we have covered question number 15 we have covered question number 16 we have covered question number 17 we have covered yes question number 18 we have covered question number 19 we have covered yes question number 20 we have covered question number 21 we have covered flow charts i asked you to go through right flow chart ka questions i asked you to go through theory questions you can please avoid these questions clear 